Hello, my name is Dr. Omende, and we continue with the lecture series on the anatomy of the heart. So here we are going to discuss the chambers of the heart, the, basically the internal um, structure of the heart and um, the neurovascular supply to the heart. So you have the chambers of the heart, right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle. So we have four chambers. Right atrium receives blood from superior and inferior vena cava, then it empties the deoxygenated blood into right ventricle. Then from right ventricle, blood is pumped through the pulmonary trunks to the pulmonary arteries to the lungs for oxygenation. After oxygenation, through the pulmonary veins, blood comes into the left atrium, then into the left ventricle that pumps the blood through the aorta and distributes to the rest of the body. So we have um, leaflet valves and cusped valves. So the leaflet valves include the tricuspid valves and the bicuspid valve, which is also called the mitral valve. Tricuspid because it has three cusps and bicuspid because it has two cusps. Then you have the semilunar valves, which are the aortic valves with two cusps. So these are um, at the aortic ascending aorta. Then you have pulmonic um, valves at the pulmonary trunk. So we discuss the right atrium. So the right atrium has an appendage, which we call the auricle. An appendage of the right atrium is called the right auricle. It's called an auricle because it looks like an ear. Then um, the right atrium, when you cut it open, you will see a rough part and a smooth part. The rough part is made up of pectinati muscle, while the smooth part is what you call the sinus venarum. This sinus venarum um, is a smooth part of the right atrium and it's separated from the rough part by what you call crista terminalis. So crista terminalis separates the sinus venarum from the pectinate muscle, separates the rough and smooth parts of the right atrium. The right atrium also has three openings. It has an opening for superior vena cava, which has no valve because blood is coming from the superior vena cava from up downwards. So there's no um, gravity to try and act against. But inferior vena cover, blood is coming from down upwards, so you will need valves to ensure unidirectional flow against gravity. And then coronary sinus is the major venous drainage of the heart. So these three open into the right atrium, superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, and coronary sinus. In the right atrium, we also have fossa ovalis. Fossa ovalis is an embryonic um, remnant, and it's a remnant for what we call foramen ovale that was in the fetus. And this fossa ovalis has a lining at the margin, which you call the limbus of fossa ovalis. So these are the features. If you ask, discuss the internal features of the right atrium. It contains an appendage called the auricle. It has a rough part and a smooth part. Rough part is made of pectinati muscle. Smooth part is uh, the sinus venerum. And these two are separated by the crista terminalis. The right atrium has three openings for the superior vena cava that lacks valves, opening for inferior vena cava that has valves, an opening for coronary sinus, which has a valve. And the right atrium also has fossa ovalis, which is a remnant for foramen ovale in fetus. This fossa ovalis has a margin, which is called the limbus of fossa ovale. So superior vena cava has no valve. The inferior vena cava has valves to pump blood against gravity and ensure unidirectional flow. And this valve is called the eustachian valve. This eustachian valve is incompetent in adults. It directs inferior vena cover blood through uh, foramen ovale in the fetus. The coronary sinus has what you call thebatian valve. So inferior vena cover has eustachian valve, while coronary sinus has thebatian valve. And these usually prevent backflow into the coronary sinus during atrial systole. Okay, so during pumping of the atria, you want to prevent backflow of deoxygenated blood into the coronary sinus so that the bashan valve will close. So this is your right atrium. If you cut the wall to examine the inner part of the right atrium, you will see a rough part made up of pectinati muscle and a smooth part. So this is rough part and smooth part. So the bashan, uh, sorry, pectinati muscles and the sinus venero. Then they're separated by crista terminalis. Then what else do we see in the right atrium? You can appreciate the fossa ovalis, and this is the limbus of the uh, fossa ovale. Fossa ovale is a remnant of, um, sorry, this is, this is your fossa, 
No, this is an opening for the coronary sinus. So fossa valis is not clear in this image. So then you see your superior vena cava opening here, inferior vena cava with its ostation valve, and then the coronary sinus with the thebashan valve. This is the pectinate, rough muscle part, the crista terminalis and the sinus venera. So then we go to the left atrium. The left atrium has openings for four pulmonary veins. Remember, we have four pulmonary veins, two superior and two inferior. So you will see those openings in the left atrium. The left atrium, like the right atrium, has an appendage, which you call the auricle. So this is the left atrium. You can see you have openings for two superior and two inferior pulmonary veins. Okay. And then um, this between left atrium and right atrium are the um, Scepter in between the two of them. That's you can see your you can appreciate your foramen ovale here from this side. So this is your fossa ovale and the limbus, which is the margin fossa ovale and the limbus. Fossa ovale is a remnant for foramen ovale that was in the fetus that will ensure blood flows from the right atrium to the left atrium. But in adults, it closes the foramen ovale closes to form the fossa ovale. So between left atrium and left ventricle, we are expecting the mitral valve. So what you can see here, this is a mitral valve, the cusp of the mitral valve. The right ventricle is the most anterior aspect of the heart. Remember, it forms the sternocostal surface. Then you have tricuspid valve between right atria and right ventricle. Tricuspid means you have three cusps. And these three cusps include an anterior cusp, posterior cusp, and the septal cusp. So these are the leaflets of the tricuspid valve. So tricuspid valve prevents um, backflow of blood. Remember, you need blood to move from right atria to right ventricle. So to prevent that backflow, you need your tricuspid valve. So it has an anterior, posterior, and septal cusps. Now, within the right ventricle, you also appreciate what we call papillary muscles. So papillary muscles are muscles that connect these cusps, uh, uh, muscles that are connected to these cusps via coda tendinae. Coda tendinae are thread-like structures in the ventricle that connect the cusps of the valves to the papillary muscles of the ventricles. So papillary muscles contract to prevent the tricuspid valve from regurgitating. So the muscles will contract to prevent the tricuspid valve regurgitation, to prevent blood, instead of blood to move from atria to ventricle. Regurgitation usually causes blood to move from ventricle upwards to atria. But the contraction of these papillary muscles prevent that regurgitation. So the papillary muscles are named the same as the cusp. So anterior, posterior, and septal papillary muscles. Then we have what you call the trabecular carne, which are just trabeculations on the right ventricle wall. And we have the moderator band, which is part of the conducting portion, part of the conducting portion of the, of the heart. It's located on the uh, right ventricle. So when they ask you what are the features, internal features of the right ventricle, that's how you're supposed to discuss it. Because from the right ventricle, you're able to appreciate tricuspid valve, that has three cusps, anterior, posterior, and septal. And these cusps are connected to papillary muscles by thread-like structures called coda tendina. So the contraction of these papillary muscles prevent regurgitation at the tricuspid valve. So we also have the trabecular carne, which are trabeculations on the right ventricle. And you have the moderator band, which are the conducting portion of the heart located on the inner portion of the right ventricle. So this is your right ventricle. This is what we are discussing, the right ventricle. And you can appreciate the cusps of valve. You can see the cusp here. And it's connected to papillary muscle here by these thread-like structures. These are the coda tendinae. So that's what you see in a ventricle. The cusps of the... Um, the cusps of the valve through the coda tendinae, which are thread-like structures, they are connected to papillary muscle. Then we go to the left ventricle. Just like the right ventricle, you'll see um, valves. And on the left side, you have mitral valve, which is bicuspid. So you have two cusps, so anterior and posterior cusps. So the anterior and posterior cusps of the bicuspid valve are connected to papillary muscles via coda tendinae, which are thread-like structures of greater number. 
than the right, the ones located on the right side. Because remember, the left ventricle has to pump the blood to the aorta to the rest of the body. So the muscles of the left ventricle are going to be bigger. The cauda tendina are going to be of greater number compared to the ones on the right ventricle because of increased pressures and strength that are needed to prevent regurgitation. So this is the left ventricle. Look at the thickness of the wall of the mass of the heart muscle and these are the um, cusps of the valve and these valves are connected to the papillary muscles via coda tendinae which are these thread-like structures and they are more than what we saw in the right ventricle because we need lots of uh, the cusps to be able to uh, be strong and prevent regurgitation because the muscle is acting with a stronger force than that of the right ventricle. Then we go to the atrioventricular valves. These are valves between the atria and the ventricles, and there are two. We have the tricuspid valves that contain three cusps. We've said the anterior, posterior, and septal cusps, and these correspond with the papillary muscles they are attached onto via coda tendina. Then we have the mitral valve, which is bicuspid, so you have two cusps, the anterior and posterior cusps. Remember, the anterior cusp is thicker and usually more rigid than the posterior. So both tricuspid and bicuspid um, valves, the cusps are flat with serrated edges. Then we have semilunar valves. Semilunar valves are arterial, uh, arterioventricular valves, arterioventricular. So at, uh, between the ventricles and the arteries, arterioventricular valves are semilunar valves. So between the aorta and the left ventricle and between the pulmonary um, trunk and the left ventricle. So the aortic valve is at the entrance of the ascending aorta and it's usually lower than that of the pulmonary valve. Okay, the pulmonary valve, remember it's on the right side from pulmonary, from the right ventricle to the pulmonary um, trunk, while the aortic valve is on the left side from the left ventricle to the aorta. So the aortic valve has three semilunar cusps. So you have anterior cusp, the left posterior cusp, and the right posterior cusp. So those are the three cusps of the aortic valve, anterior, left posterior, and right posterior. And the, the, these are shaped as cusps. Then the pulmonary valve is at the junction of the pulmonary infundibulum and it's at the commencement of the pulmonary trunk. It also has three cusps. So you have left anterior, right anterior, and posterior cusps. Aortic valve had anterior cusp, left posterior, and right posterior, while pulmonary valve has three cusps, left anterior, right anterior, and posterior cusp. What are the surface markings of these valves? Tricuspid valve is behind the midline of the lower sternum, behind midline of lower sternum, while the mitral valve, you find it on the fourth costal cartilage at the left side. So the left fourth costal cartilage, that's where you find the surface marking of mitral valve. The aortic and pulmonary valves are behind the left border of the sternum at the third intercostal space and third costal cartilage, respectively. So both of them are behind the left border of the sternum, but aortic valve is at the third intercostal space while the pulmonary valve is at the third costal cartilage, so it's slightly above the aortic valve. Where do you auscultate for heart sound? Where will you put your stethoscope to listen to the heart sounds from these valves? So the tricuspid valve, you put your stethoscope at the fourth intercostal space on left parasternal border. So left border parallel to the sternum, or left border of the sternum, fourth intercostal space tricuspid valve. Mitral valve, you listen to it at the apex beats, the apex of the heart. Remember we say the apex is at the left fifth intercostal space mid clavicular line. So you put your stethoscope there and listen to the mitral valve. The aortic and pulmonary valves, both of them, you find them at the second intercostal spaces. So space, this is a space below the second rib. But the aortic valve is on the right border of the sternum, second intercostal space, while the pulmonary valve is on the left border of the sternum, second intercostal space. 